People everywhere are really trying to get control of their healthcare and there's epidemics and disease happening around the world. There's technology coming in to solve a lot of these challenges. And both of you, uh, Michelle and Tom, you're both innovators and leaders in bringing new technology into the healthcare space and not just lowering costs, but really improving outcomes, which I think is what everyone really wants to embrace. Michelle, what is Medable doing to accelerate healthcare? Medable is really addressing the challenges around clinical trials. So right now, clinical trial for a new drug, uh, from the time the drug is conceived of to the point where it's approved by the FDA takes about 12 years. And we're really trying to shorten those timelines and get critical therapies to patients faster right. by creating kind of a global community of research participants who own their own research data and can participate in clinical trials anytime, anywhere. So really broadening the scope of participation and making clinical trials accessible to anyone. What kind of results have you seen so far getting it into market? Oh, it's pretty amazing. I think that we hit at a time where there was a big need. So, you know, every biopharma company is looking at how do we deliver a personalized medicine? How do we bring new drugs to smaller participant pools um, and really disrupt the kind of a common model where a patient has to come into a clinic, limiting the patients to the immediate geographic area? So with our system, by enabling a patient to participate in the comfort of their own home, uh, the pharma companies and biotech companies are really eager for this type of technology. And actually on that point, Tom, you're really involved in not just collecting the data, but getting helping people get in front of uh, and managing care in the context of dementia. Now this is something obviously that afflicts a huge percentage of the population. There's some big stats around that, but how does the cognitivity solution work? Our goal is really to help as many people as possible. So the, the kind of holy grail of, of dementia diagnosis is that everybody should be detected at an early enough stage where clinical intervention makes a difference. If you can catch the disease early enough, there are even in the absence of a a, a disease-modifying therapeutic, there are things that people can be done which offsets the, the sort of expensive care part. So not only are there social benefits, but there are massive financial benefits to this, this early detection. And as an example, there was a recent Alzheimer's Association report which stated that if 100% of people were caught early enough in the disease stage, so at the mild cognitive impairment stage, the, the savings to the, to, to the payers basically is, is nearly as much as $8, $8 trillion. How does the technology solve that problem? So we have a different way of doing it. We involve a, a very uh, a sort of a visual task which engages a large proportion of the brain, which is a very important thing with current neuroscience. So ours is a software solution which works very well in the in exactly the sort of environment that Michelle's talking about, where it can be delivered to patients in their home or it can be done in the clinic or wherever. It doesn't matter where they are. They can still take a meaningful, sensitive test that, that can improve their outcomes. Well, one of the things I'd like to ask both of you is that people would be, you know, myself, thinking of myself of consuming these new ways of approaching healthcare, I'd be concerned about the quality uh, control mm -hmm. of it. And, you know, you, you sort of, as a person, think you go into a medical uh, practitioner and you expect uh, you, the expertise and you're going in to that place for the expertise. So when you start thinking about taking control of it more remotely, how do I get comfortable that the quality is going to be there and the outcomes are going to be better? I think one of the ways that we address that is through the use of artificial intelligence. So if you can detect patterns in the way that people respond to the data or to the, the task, then that allows you to tell something about them. So, you know, if you can tell if someone's distracted, we can pick this up, we can work this out. If somebody is displaying the patterns of somebody who has, you know, dementia or MCI or whatever, we can pick up on that as well. So these advances in data science are very much part of what's what's happening. Yeah, I think that's really important is contextualizing it. But I'd also kind of turn it around to say that the challenge we have in developing new instruments um, is really that the standard instrument that's been used for decades is remarkably poor. So an example is the six minute walk test is this test to gauge cardiopulmonary function and it's administered in a clinic under a very supervised setting but it's a very crude measure of cardiopulmonary function. So while we could say, hey, it's been standardized this way by walking down a hall, and um, the actual ability for it to measure disease is extremely poor. When you look at the variety of diseases it's applied to, and in a world where we're looking at therapeutics that may impact how you're doing on a day-by-day -day or week-by-week -week basis. Sure. So I think that it's actually an, a really interesting question because our ability to measure disease is actually so much better through these digital instruments. Thanks.